and its energumen opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mile novices. Energumen by a romping 10, 12 legs. So, hello and welcome back to episode number six of the Champ E podcast, Ronald Groom, I was going to say the Road to Cheltenham Challenge, but we're back again to preview the weekend's racing upcoming um, at Sandown, Aintree, Navan and Punchestown and Cork. It's a bumper weekend and we've we've almost forgot about the, the Peterborough Chase at um, Huntington. Lads, we have Kim Bailey on the show. That's going to be coming up um, previewing, of course, Imperial Aura goes again. Um, this weekend, and um, we're joined by the Golden Groom and Thomas Coyle um, for episode six of the Champerty podcast. Lads, why not start at Sandown? Um, of course, Shaq and Porsois uh, is due to go in the uh, Tingle Creek um, at Sandown, but we have a nice novice chase um, before it at uh, 150. Um, third time lucky uh, heads the betting at 150. Um, in the the Henry VIII Chase, um, he's a six to four chance. I'll run through the betting, uh, six to four um, third time lucky. Edward Stone for Alan King nine to two, um, and Ellen Drama is thirteen to two. Warlord thirteen to two. Um, Paul Nichols is Il Ilradato, and um, if I pronounced that right, is a fifteen to two chance. Uh, Stolen silver and do your job. Um, it's a hot looking race runner groom, as as Mike Vince would say, will give you first innings on this one. Yeah, it is a hot race, uh, Barry. It's very early in the season for a grade one, I suppose. So we don't know a lot about these novice chasers. I suppose we do know a lot about third third time lucky. He's looked good enough. Both starts so far. He's jumped well, travelled well, and he's done it nicely. Uh I wouldn't be I wouldn't be taking short odds about him though, I have to say. Just just with, with this field, you couldn't rule you couldn't rule any of them out really. Um Edward Stone probably as good as him over hurdles and a he did it nicely at, at work last time. Had his jump and tested there, and um, by for pleasure going off in front. And if there's one thing that's going to happen in this race for these novice chasers is their jumping is going to be tested. Um, the railway fences, those fences down the back, it's bang, bang, bang. I just wouldn't want to be taking a short price for a third time lucky. I have to say, uh, the other horse I kind of liked was Il, Il Rodoto for Paul Nichols, uh, four year old getting the allowance. I thought he did it nicely last time as well. Even stolen silver, I wouldn't rule anyone out out of that. Uh, he was a good handicap chase for him at Cheltenham, so it's a no bet race for me, Barry. I'm afraid. Uh, and if you had to push me anyway, I'd probably be looking to oppose third time lucky. So see what sort of price he is on Saturday morning, and might try and lay him at something like six to four or anything under that. Um, just think the oh, you couldn't rule any of these out. And with the novice chasers this time of the season, I'd I'd, I'd take the field against them. I found a bet in here, actually. Uh, Roland, I agree with you. It is competitive. Um, I think the favourite is plenty short now at 6-4. to four. Look, he's, he's farm on good ground. He jumped well uh, on both his previous starts over fences. Uh, but I just think the Cheltenham factor as well. Everyone gets very excited when you see a novice over fences. Albeit he bet, um, he bet very little um, on, previous, on his previous two starts. This is going to be his first big test over fences. And um, Edward Stone. Uh, nine to two. I think that's a bit of value, actually. To be honest, um, he always he, look. He went over fences uh, last year. It didn't work out for him. Um, was brought down on first chase start this season. But I just think uh, he's always struck me as a horse that would be a much better uh, chaser, and he achieved quite a high rating over hurdles of 150. Um, um, I did think uh, I had this belief uh, was ba- wasn't based on on very on, on much fact. Uh, that he was going to be a better horse on, on, on softer ground. It is good ground. He's farm on good ground. Um, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I think he jumped well last time, was impressive, um, has scope to improve. And I think um, I think he's, you know, I, I think the stiff hit uphill finish at Sandown is probably going to suit him. Um, Edward Stone, uh, and for me, he's a bet here uh, at 9-2. to two. Uh, Happily take on third time looking at the prices. And uh, Alan King's horse, Edward Stone, is a, uh, a strong fancy for me in the first. I think Manella Drama, uh, something tells me he's going to want further. Um, and then um, he used to swish his tail a little bit last year, which I don't like um, in, in Novice Hurdles. I know the McCains um, do think he's, what, the, the, he, he's, he's probably one of the best horses in the yard, but uh, Edward Stone for me um, in the, the first race, the, the, um, the Henry the Novice. Uh, 225. 
um, is the Tingle Creek. It's the big race. Uh, Patrick Mullins right Shaq and um Give you a show on a betting 11 to 8 Shaq and Porsoir. Um, Nuba Negra. Nuba Negra is a 9 to 4 chance. Grenatine uh, for Paul Nichols. Uh, 5 to 1. Uh, Captain Guinness 14 to 1. Rachel Blackmore takes the right. And Hitman um, is the second string for Paul Nichols at 14 to 1. Um, Thomas Coyle. First innings. I, I'm glad now because I can breathe a sigh of relief. The iPad lit up there when I talked there. The first one I was rambling on from notes that I had written down. I had no uh, thing. Yeah, look. Um, Come on, get to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> more red wine for you, huh? Um, no, yeah, look, it, it's hard to look past Shaq and Porsois on his run in Punchestown where he bet New Bay Negra by about 20 lengths. The only thing... Is New Bay Negra has had the run where he beat Politolog and put the kettle on in Cheltenham. So race fitness is on his side. Um, Captain Guinness, the last time when he bet Andy Dufin was a, it was back to a bit of form that he kind he he had a big reputation and it did all blow up from last year. He had that heart palpitations as Ronan said before, and um, you know maybe maybe he's a horse that could get back in the track and like he's a horse that has. There's plenty of improvement left in him because um, we probably have let. He's probably a horse that we've let go by the by the wayside because of all these uh, little things. But you have to remember he was well fancy before he went. He was well fancy at one stage for an article before it all went tits up for him basically. Um, so he, I, I wouldn't be surprised um, him run the good race. But it's hard to look past Shakan Porsba. Um, Grenatine, you think you you. Uh, Put him up last year for that race in Exeter, didn't you, Barry? You were smoked there for a few weeks. When they come in there, I'm going to put him up again. Ah, uh, no, his uh, return run of the weekend. I yeah, think gosh. this is this lad's target. Good ground. This I'm a big Jack and Porswell fan. I've, I've always, but I just think he might be a bit vulnerable here first time up. Um, he has most of his form is on, I suppose, softer, good to soft. He is form, but but softer conditions. And um, this is going to be the first time. Uh, people questioned uh, his ability to come up a stiff, a stiff uphill uh, going into Cheltenham. I don't really buy that. Uh, he's run well. He's obviously won at Leopardstown. Uh, but at Cork last year, I suppose on his first start, um, I think he came on a lot for that run. I get that they're bringing him over uh, and taking their chance. But I, I think Grenadine's a big danger here. Um, you know, he, he won obviously over course and distance um, on his last start last season, ran a cracker. Uh, in the champion chase, Tom, and he only finished the length of Shaq and Porsois in the champion chase. Uh, good ground. Um, second start of the season, and uh, Nichols did. He was open about it. Uh, I thought he'd go and win the Holland Gold Cup off top weight, but anyway, uh, Nichols w- had was on the record and saying he would come on for the run. Um, and Briny uh, against Patrick Mullins, I think. Um, I think he's a big danger here on rattling fast ground. Obviously, he has to come up to his level, um, but uh, yeah, I think I think five to one is the best price you can get on Granity, and I think that's another bet here. Lona Groom, Jesus, Barry Doyle. I think I agree with you, uh, believe it or not, uh, which is probably bad news for you. But at around five to one, you could be a bet here, all right. I think uh, in a five horse race, well, just listen, listening to Nichols at the start of the season, uh, everything is about this race. Basically, since he won at Sandown last run last season in a race that worked out really well for him, everything has kind of worked out, been working back. Absolutely no, um, I've absolutely no um, worry about the, the run at Exeter, to be honest with you. Nichols said before that race that uh, it, it was it, it was all about coming here. And uh, you look at the horses that got, beat, got beaten at Exeter race before, the Halden Gold Cup, like, Few cards got beat there off off a high mark. Baller success, Sire de Grugy, they've all gone there on their seasonal debut. It's not, it's a hard thing to do to win off like 167. The mark that he is, and uh, I think they'll go fast from the front here with Shaq on, and that'll suit him down to the ground. Nicholas says he's all about settling, um, which might just he's got the course and distance form obviously, which is important. And Shaq on first time out on good ground. Anyone have any sort of Slight worries about that. I would kind of just it just niggle me a bit. Willie was on a call today, 
um for a press call for the race and he was asking is there any 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 rain forecast for Sandown, which I think there is a bit of rain, but is there enough rain for it to to turn good to soft or soft? I'm, I'm not sure. And uh, Dubai Negra, look, Tom, I think you mentioned, uh, yeah, he's got the run on, under his belt. I'm not sure if that's an actual positive for him. I I think he could be a horse that's really well fresh. I mean, look at his run in the in the Champion Chase last season, and look at his run at Punchestown. He completely blew up there. Um, so I'm not sure. I, mean, I, I do like the horse, um, but I thought they were going to put him away for a bit now, and uh, I suppose maybe get get this out of the way, and maybe even go straight to Cheltenham from here. I don't know, but he did did it nicely at Cheltenham. It'll just be slight niggle in my head that he he mightn't be able to run to the same level here. So Granatine in a match bet against Nubi Negra, or if you wanted to back him five to one, I thought was fair enough. Uh, just with Shakan coming here first time up. Have the balls, will you, Ron and Groom? Put him up to win the race five to one. Shakan Porsua, yeah, is a worry. I do agree with you. Um and yeah, Granatine. And like you, you know, you look at you look at the race as a whole, like it's it's a hot, it's a hot race. It's a good renewal. Nuber Negra. Um you know, he's a horse certainly improving as well. I won't mind the ground. And it just yeah. Uh, Grenatine for me though. He's the he's the one. Uh, and it's interesting, like you mentioned Shaq and Persua, the tactics of this race. Um would Shaq and Persua make it or or would, would Grenatine? Because uh, he was a horse last season, uh, although he was keen in his races, um, he was staying on late and something like uh, uh, it struck me as a sort of horse that um, would stay two and a half. Um, and and Paul, no, they want to get him to settle, don't they? It's all about settling for him, it's coming off yeah. a fast pace, yeah. But but Nichols did say, uh, and he's on the record in saying it, that over two miles he wouldn't be afraid of stepping this horse up and trip as the season goes on. Obviously, this is his target. Um, he also said, um, that I suppose two miles, riding aggressively over two miles. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the tactics, um, but but I, I, I'd like to see him ridden more aggressively over two miles, personally. I, I wouldn't now, I have to say. I, as a backer of Grenatine, if I saw him fly off in front, I'd be... I wouldn't be, he's I wouldn't be too happy. Better now, Doro, and he, he said if he settles, yeah, but I, I'm not sure is he able to go off and give Shakan a lead and... Uh, I don't know if if I, I'd be happier as a backer if if Shakan went off in front and he and he settled in behind and see if he's good enough then. But I'm not sure about him taking it on. I just think they tried that last year and um, I, I don't know. He's a bet You're, for me anyway. Five to you one. You reckon Hit, Hitman is in there for a job to set and make sure that? Well, like he's Perhaps, not, he's no yeah. back num he's no back number either. But like if if they want to set it up for him. You know, yeah, it'd be a nice gesture from the owners if, um, if that's what he was, <laughs> Sir, Sir Alex Ferguson and the lads. But uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Um, hot race, never... hot, hot, hot race. Grenatine for me, five to one. Um, more to come from him. Uh, Shakan, vulnerable first time up. Thomas Coyle, final selection. Uh, look, I, I, I'm going to stick with Shakan. Um, he just he, he is the class act. If ever, if if he's ready to go first time up, they, they'll do well to catch him. The golden groom. Yeah, go Granatine. Hey, right. Lads, next race we are going to preview is the Many Clouds at entry. Um, Album Fola was in the the entries, um, hasn't been declared. Um, so the, the betting is as follows, and I'm going to call it out to you now. 13 to 8 Protectorat. Uh, we ran a cracker, of course, in Paddy Power. Um, Native River. Uh, the veteran nine to four, Imperial Aura, best price nine to two uh, for David Bass and Kim Bailey. Uh, simply the bets thirteen to two. Sam Brown uh, sixteen to one. Tiger Roll twenty to one. Uh, the two amigos sixty six to one. Wish, wishing and hoping sixty six to one. We're going to preview the race, and then we're going to hear uh, Kim Bailey uh, talking about Imperial Aura and uh, some of his stars in the air um, for this season. Um, Rolling Groom. Um, I had a look at this race, and for me, the favourite is crazy short in here, 13 to 8. Thoughts? Yeah, he's short, but he, maybe he should be just about favourite. He shapes like he'll stay the three-mile trip. Now, you don't know it if un, until they do it, but he does shape like he'll stay. The way he finished out his race, the grade one that he won at entry last season, and the way he finished the Paddy Power, he was booming up the hill. Um. So he does shape like he's stayed, but until he does it, and 
you know, you're probably going to be on very soft ground here. There's 18 mils forecast for entry, and the Tizards will be rubbing their hands with that because they've been patient with with uh, the old boy and um, waited for soft ground, and it looks like they're going to get it here in a race that he's won before. And yeah, he is 11. He's going on 12. He's not getting any better, but. Geez, he's hold his form quite well, lads. If you look at it, he's still rated 166 and probably worth all of that 166, considering when he, you know, he beat Bristol the Mile last season on heavy ground at Sandown. He was fourth in the Gold Cup again. Um, you know, he ran third in this race last season. This race was a bit of a mess last season behind Lakeview, lad. You know, he's won this race before. Like, I'd be, I'd be hopeful enough that he could run close to 160 at least here, first time up even as an 11 year old and with him with the guaranteed stamina protector at not so guaranteed i i prefer him out those two anyway i'm interested to hear what kim bailey says now about imperial aura i thought he was interesting for the bet fair obviously fell too early to know where he would have ended up but now that's just a bit of a question for me he's not complete his last three starts if you look at the form he had earlier on last season he looked really good looked really impressive but that form doesn't really amount to serious, serious amount now. I think the rest of them have a bit to do. Simply the bets is interesting coming up and trip. And obviously we're always interested to see what Tiger Old does, but couldn't really fancy him here. Um so Native River for me, Barry. Oh God, we're on a groom. Native River is a granddad. <laughs> Who are you gonna um, take him on? Who are you gonna take him on with then? Imperial Aura, of course. Be, be, be kind to him. We're going to speak to. Um, look, uh, he, he was he was the eye catcher, wasn't he? Um, he was the wise man's uh, horse off the back of the um, the Betfair Chase, uh, but he was he was running an absolute cracker. I, I slightly worried that he has a, had had a wind up over the summer. I asked Kim, and we'll hear from Kim um, speaking about um, every horse seems to have a problem with their wind, and every you know. You know, it's it, it's used as an excuse a lot now. He's had his win, as he said, wind ops are a common thing now. Um, he thinks this has helped him. Um, and this horse for me is is he's still very unexposed going up and trip. He was a horse I loved early on last year. Uh, he's ha had his issues later on in the season and uh, put in a, a disappointing run, obviously uh, off the back of his his fall um, last season, but. Um, he's a horse like he's only an eight year old. He's he's only had fourteen starts in his life. Like so, he, in terms of mileage, um, for me, he shapes like a horse that will um, appreciate um, three miles plus versus the favourite in here, a uh, protector at, um, who I get ran a cracker, but as you say, Ron, he still has to go on and, and prove that. Um, Imperial Aura has won over uh, the longer distance, and I think he still has more. Uh, he still has a lot of improvement in him. I don't think the ground is going to be an issue. Uh, jumps well, and um, you know was going pretty well. I thought it, it, in in the Betfair before falling. So he's the one at a price. You know, I'll, I'll take you on uh, Native River with Imperial Aura. Uh, the favorite is very short for me in here. I agree with you. Simply the bets is interesting going to Nichols. There wasn't much between uh, him and Simply the Bets um, in handicap company previously. So. Is interesting and gets uh, gets weight from from Imperial Aura, but he, he he'd be my pick now, Barry. Simply bets, so he would. Uh, obviously, we don't know will he stay this far, but um, if you look back on that handicap the last time when Protector At was second, I know um, simply the bets kind of faded at the end. He jumped the last maybe in second and he faded, but he was keen enough the whole way around. Um, I think if he settles a bit better, I think it's a good move. Gavin Sheehan getting back on him. He obviously knows the horse very well and got on very well with him. Um, but the, the bit of form and going back to Imperial R um, last January and that there was a novice handicap chase in Cheltenham and um, simply the bets gave Imperial R a four pound and a beaten and he's getting six pound off him this weekend which is a turnaround of ten pound which is a lot a lot of weight um, and I think I definitely agree that the favourite's too short at that and he's three pounds they, they ran off level weights in that handicap the last time um, he was beaten five and a half lengths. He receives three pound off him today. I know. I know the favour has gone up in the ratings, but off the last time. So all these little calculations together. If Gavin Sheen can get him switched off, um, and he does stay, he might stay. Like he he did win in Cheltenham and he stayed on well in them handicaps. 
So I've no real reason to think that he won't stay if he settles. Um, I think I think he's the better of the race at about six to one, to be honest. Interesting. Yeah, well, Gavin Sheehan, we spoke to him last year on the podcast, um, loved this horse and thought he could go along. He thought he could go all the way to the top, simply the bet. So interesting. Um, and has been well supported. Final selections in this race, Rona Groom, you're going with the granddad? Can you hold on? I'm going to defend the granddad here because you've given you've given me no analysis at all. What? Tell me why Native River can't win this race at eleven. Uh, Thomas Kyle, final selection. <laughs> Simply the best <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, brilliant. Okay, let's move it's on. Graceful. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> um, entry. We're going to look at the beach or chase now. We're on a group. Come on, give us the winner. You love this race, don't you? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I love it now, but um, uh, it's, it's a good handicap chase to get involved with. Uh, it's it's wide open, Barry. You now I have to say, and it's it's thirteen to the field there. Um, I see McTotty, the um, Grand Sefton winner, is there again. I do like one, and it, it sounds unoriginal because just going for another Irish horse. But Chris's dream is interesting here off the top. Uh, I was just going through his record again. He's, I think this is another horse that goes really well fresh. Uh, and and he has experience over the fences as well. Um, he was going quite well in the Grand National last season when he came down late enough. I think he came down at the fourth last. Mm. Now, his stamina was just about to be tested at that point. But this he's not obviously going as far this time. It's only 3-2 uh, Beecher. And if you look at his record fresh just have it written down here it's first or record fresh i say record on a seasonal debut it was first sixth first first and second um uh, and there's a troy town chase in there there's a second was in the darren royal the grade one there last season so he runs to a very good standard first time up um he liked the ground go to trip henry's forces and great form he's booked john joe neil 12th one interested me a bit uh the other one i'd give a mention to is uh achille there for the uh the labrooks trophy duo visha williams and charlie deutsch he's quite likely a race for 11 year old love the soft ground i do think it's going to get pretty soft at uh at aintree on saturday and he's got decent enough really really strong actually forming handicap chases over marathon distance and soft ground he was second to lord de mesnil at haydock last february he was sixth in the midlands national so he's kind of crept up the handicap without winning, but he's he's he seems to be going in the right direction. And obviously, Venetia is in great form. Uh, he was in and around the 16 to 1 mark, so I'll take those two against the field. Thomas Coyle, um, I've two or three picked out. Um, look, the favorite done it nicely the last time. Um, Snow Leopardus, um, in Bangor, she beat that Brian Ellison horse that um, Andrew Blair White used to be raving on about. What's his name? Um, Windsor, oh, Windsor, Avenue. Windsor Avenue. Yeah, he bet him well. Looks he jumped well. Um, looking at Aiden Coleman's Instagram this week, they had it schooling over national fences, jumped like a book and that. Um, as Rowan says, the rain's coming, so we'll like that. Has a lovely weight of 10 4, so probably probably deserves to be favourite. But uh, like Ronan, I'm not going to be too original, I'm going to kind of stick with the Irish as well. But man that's in flying form is no need. Um, 2A per me. He's only a pound. He's only rated a pound higher in England than he is in Ireland, which is not usual. Usually, um, Owen Walsh takes off a valuable five as a lovely weight of ten nine. Um, this horse, he was second to the Jam Man in a uh, Troy Town, wasn't he? And uh, okay, he's he's he ran in the national last year, but he ran no sort of a race. He pulled up, I think, four out. But at least he has some experience over the fences. But on his re in his re reproduction of something or his reintroduction this year of being fifth in this year's Troy Town when he he got he got short of a bit of room maybe up the straight a bit I know he finished fifth and run while Fred won it very handy but uh look I think there could be a bit of improvement from that run um he will stay the three two um so I think he's off a nice weight and uh we all know how good Noel Mead's horses are going at the minute to give a great um, festival in Fairy House last week, win the bumper and win the grade one with Beacon Edge. So you couldn't have a man in, in better form. Um, so I, I'd be giving him a bit of a chance about 16, 20 to 1 um, as well. He's a good each way bet. I'm sure you're going to get five or six places in a race like this. So uh, 
definitely wouldn't be putting anyone off him, having a few quid in him. Yeah, interesting. Uh, no strong opinion in the race for me. And with all the Ronan Groom banter, we forgot to hear from Kim Bailey. So delighted to have trainer Kim Bailey on board for the Champ That E podcast, episode number six of this season. Kim, it's great to have you on the show. And uh, I suppose what better place to start than today? And uh, a nice 11 win length uh, bumper winner in Chianti Classico. Um, yeah. I, he, he's a very nice horse. And uh, I, I was bitterly disappointed he managed to get beat when he was second at Ascot. Um, but there was a Galileo that we brought over from Germany with a very fine pedigree um, from the flat, which uh, unfortunately beat us. So, uh, um, anyway, we've improved from there. He was very impressive today. Absolutely. And, and a horse that uh, came from Colin Bo, I believe, in, in Ireland. He did indeed. And he was owned by a chap called Alan Hall, uh, Ben Horsell, um, who I've known for a long time. So it was good to go. It's the first time I bought a horse off him. I bought him, obviously, Colin before, but uh, um, it was a nice connection. And uh, I bought him at the Tattersall's Cheltenham sale and um, um, the person who was very keen to buy him that day came and bought him off me, which is Richard Pilkington. So he and Francis Brook, who's um, the Queen's representative at Ascot, um, own the horse. So they've got a very nice horse to look forward to. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned um, you mentioned his debut. Um, he, he ran a very good race, to be fair, didn't he? And he was only kind of picked up late. He he ran a very good race. I, I you know we generally thought he'd probably win that day, and uh, he beat all the English horses, but unfortunately not the German horse. But um, the German horse was um, um, very much prepped to win his race, and I think probably is pretty useful. I mean he's a he's a flat bread flat bread horse, and and we're all jumpers. So I was delighted with him that day. Disappointed, yes, but uh, he's you know he's progressed today, and uh, I think you know he'll have a couple more runs in bumpers in the spring, and looks like a very nice horse to go herding next season. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was actually my next question. What was was the plan to, uh, I suppose, stick to bumpers? But well, listen, we're going to come on to this weekend. Um, a couple of star names uh, entered uh, for yourself. I suppose we, we might as well start with the, uh, I suppose, stable star Imperial Aura, an eight-year-old now by Kalanisi. Uh, he was running a, an absolute cracker, Kim, um, before unfortunately coming down at Haydock. First and foremost, how is he? Well, he's obviously, um, and we feel absolutely fine as I wouldn't be running him again. So, um, um, you know, in that respect, we, we seem very happy with him. He's worked nicely and he's schooled very well. So fingers crossed this time it goes according to plan or certainly stands up anyway. Absolutely. He's only had the, the 14 runs um, in, in his life. So he's, he's, he's relatively, I suppose, on exposed goal, I suppose, in tri open trip tri to over three miles, I suppose, this season. Yeah, the, 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 I've always felt he was a three miler. Um, you know, he was a very progressive individual last year. He won at the Cheltenham Festival eighteen months before that, or the season before that. And uh, you know, his first two runs last season were good. Um, although I do think that the Ascot race form probably wasn't as good as we'd like to see it. Um, and it slightly went wrong for him at uh, um, at Cheltenham. And I've, I, you know, to this day, I've never seen horses go so fast. And half, you know, when you get a grade one like that and half the horses pull up, it gives you some idea how competitive that race was. So, you know, we walk away from that and we start a new season. It was very disappointing to see him fall at, at, um, at Haydock. But there we are. It happened. And hopefully that won't be repeated. Yeah, he was, he was travelling quite well in the race. Uh, I, I did read a comment. Did he have a wind up during the summer? Was his breathing an issue? He had a wind operation during the summer. It, it's quite a sort of normal thing nowadays, isn't it? You know, you read about wind operations of virtually every single horse. It seems to be an excuse everybody seems to grab hold of at times. <laughs> anyway, we shall see whether... I, I think it has made a difference to him. And uh, um, But then again, you only find out in the second half of the race and we hadn't got that far the other day. So um, we shall see again, providing everything goes according to plan on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. 161 now, Kim. Honestly, I suppose, how, how far do you think he might go? Well, uh, it's a really difficult question, that, because at the end of it, we're looking into a crystal ball. Um, and uh, he, he has to go and run well on Saturday um, to justify taking his place in the King George. Um, and then, obviously, it, King George is going to be a mighty competitive this race, race this year. You know, we've got none of, your, none of your top stars coming over from Ireland um, for, for, sat for the many clouds, which is a big bonus for us English mm -hmm. people, because at the end of it, um, you know, you've all stayed at home or gone elsewhere. So um, uh, it gives us a slight reprieve for a, for a weekend or so. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, Kim, I wish you the best with him. Um, you mentioned the Irish horse, of course, Album Fall. It doesn't take his his place in the lineup. Uh, on to Sunday, of course, we're sticking with the stars. First flow, a, a nine year old. Um, Kim, he, he was an incredible horse. Um, I, I suppose ran up a sequence of you know six wins uh, in a row. Um, is the plan to give him his first run of the season uh, in the Peterborough? Well, it was never the plan. The plan was always to go for the Jingle Creek. Um, but um, when we saw that they were watering at Sandown uh, for a horse that wants soft ground, it really was not never going to be a question we were going to run in it. Um, the Peterborough Chase very much was second-hand idea. Um, we've trained the horse for this weekend. Um, there are very, very, very few races for him. Um, there are no two-mile races now for handy, you know, if you want to run the handicap. Um, so we, we, we really had to take our chance. And, you know, the ground is uh, hopefully um, softer at Hader, uh, sorry, at Huntington than it is at Sandown and uh, flat track two and a half miles. Well, it, we're stepping up in trip, but I personally believe he'll get it. Mind you, my jockey thinks he won't. So um, hopefully we'll find out more on, on, on Sunday. But the ground is not going to be ideal. Um, but, um, you know, you, you, when you train a horse for a weekend um, and uh, there's not really an awful lot to go for, we've, we've got to go. And, um, you know, he's... He's nine years old. He's got a little bit of experience now, and uh, um, hopefully he'll handle the ground at Huntingdon. It'll be it'll hopefully ride softer than it probably looks with a bit of luck. Mm, yeah, well, you've kind of covered it all there. I had a couple of questions to ask you about him. Uh, we were talking about Irish horses, I suppose, and horses coming from Ireland, Kim. Um, tomorrow, uh, Friday, Fair Frontiers. Um, he's, he's down to go on the Ballymore Winter Novices Hurdle. It's a Grade Two. Um, a horse that came from, from Declan Queenie after finishing second at Navan. Yes, um, and um, uh, you know, funny old things happen in life and fate's a funny thing. We brought him with a view to running him at Aintree um, and uh, um, when he arrived he, uh, he spooked at something and got loose and uh, unfortunately fell over and um, grazed his shoulder so we, we, we couldn't get him ready to run. So actually fate played into our hands so we gave him a, a long break and a long summer off and you know, I think he's a stronger horse for doing that. Um, very, very hard to work out what his form was. He won very impressively at Worcester. Uh, neither the second or third horse has run since. Uh, one or two of the horses have pulled up run since, but that doesn't mean a thing. Um, the style of which he won was good, but I mean, it's a slightly different ball game to what we're meeting tomorrow. And uh, how much I, I'd love to see him run well. It's a big ask. Um, it's a big big race, and there's some really good horses in it. Um, but there's a lot of enthusiastic owners. One man's coming over from Denmark to come and watch him run, and uh, they're very enthusiastic. But who knows? He's you know they've, They're all novices, aren't they? So uh, mm. they've all gone there with reputations. I want to see how good we are one way or the other. Mm, absolutely. Speaking about young horses, exciting young horses, uh, Kim, um, a horse that just kind of caught my eye in terms of the entries. Uh, tree, or sorry, through through the Looking Glass, um, down to go tomorrow in Exeter. Um, a horse that I suppose, um, I think you trained the mother. Did you to win? I did. I, I I did train the mother, and the owner Keith Ellis, um, some years ago, asked me to buy a mare that he could race and hopefully win with, then breed from, and we did that. And this is the first horse that he's bred, or and. Uh, so Keith and Liz Ellis, who um, own the horse, they're very excited about it tomorrow. Is he a bumper horse? Probably not. Um, he's by Cape Tower. He's a big horse. He's a very backward individual. I think in time he's going to be a smashing horse. But he's, you know, he's not. He's not a, a Chianti Classico by any means. And the, the horse they make favourite um, was fourth in Chianti Classico's race at Ascot. So I think it's a, quite a deep race. Um, if he finishes in the first six, I'll be thrilled. Yeah, absolutely. A horse that I just wanted to mention because he is in in, in the Welsh Grand National Trial. Um, a horse caught one for Rosie. Um, he's in a, he's in a, he would be in a very difficult situation at the moment because, you know, he won two very moderate races very, very impressively last season. He's not the easiest horse to train. Um, he doesn't necessarily want good ground. He wants slightly softer ground. Um, he probably does want the trip, but I, you know, I, I don't think Saturday is anywhere to look at him for the future. I think he needs to come down a few pounds in the handicap, get a bit more experience. And I think, you know, a race, if, providing he comes out of this race um, on Saturday in one piece, there'll be a, a nice race for him somewhere over the Christmas period. Yeah, absolutely. Mentioned for just a couple of horses, one of my old favourites, Kim. Vindication, how is he? Well, we retired him now, sadly, and uh, 
he pulled up at Ascot last time. He's we've had issues with him for quite a while, and uh, he had a nasty fall at uh, in the Hennessy. Well, no, the Labrick, as they call it now, at, at Newbury last season. And to this day, we don't know really what happened. Um, and he's never really been the same horse since. And uh, although he'd been working well at home and schooling well at home, he never showed any life when he ran at Ascot. And I'm not a person for, for trudging horses on. I retired him immediately after that race. And we found a very good home for him, and he'll be... He'll be, you know, he'll be treasured and loved um, and um, have a nice life now, which I think is really important for these, these horses. And, but he's been a star for us. He, he's a horse that rose to the top in an unbelievably quick time. And, and I've always felt he was a gold cup horse, but sadly um, it wasn't to be. And there were too many issues that we had to deal with with him, sadly. Mm, okay. And, and a horse that was impressive in, 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 in bumpers last year, uh, in a bumper, uh, was Quintara. Uh, plans for him? Well, he's due to have an entry any minute now. He ran, he ran the other day at, uh, at Lingfield, um, and the, the horse that won the race is actually running against Fair Frontiers tomorrow. Um, we went there with, well, he was odds on favourite, which was probably a short price for what was on offer that particular day, but he went to the first hurdle and the horse ran right across him at the first hurdle um, and quite honestly scared the living daylights out of him and never really got into any route, you know, any sort of uh, uh, rhythm as a result of it. Um, and... Uh, he probably the ground wasn't soft enough for him um, and the trip wasn't far enough. I think he's an out and out stare on soft ground. He is a lovely horse um, and you will see much more of him and you'll see better things of him um, after his last run. As I say, we get, you know, if we have a proper winter, he'll see a proper horse. Yeah, great stuff. And just one entered in a bumper on Monday. Charming getaway is the plan to run. He's obviously unraced. At the chat, the plan is to run. Um, he's, um, he's, a nice, he's not a very big horse. Um, he's by Getaway, who's a star. I, I, I see they've got quite a few of them. I like Getaways. Mm -hmm. um, and again, he's, he's a bit like the horse that runs tomorrow at Exeter. He's not wound up to go and win a bumper. You know, my horses are not wound up to win a bumper. If they're good enough to win, they all win. Um, and uh, as I said to someone some time ago, I'm not a flat trainer. Um, but uh, <laughs> and I don't mean that, I don't mean that in, in a derogatory to anybody. But, you know, these horses have got a a longer life ahead of them and, 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 and winding them up to win a bumper is not necessarily part of my lifestyle. So, uh, you know, I want them to be hanging around for a while. You know, Vindication won his bumper and went through his novice hurdle, novice chase campaign. Um, Imperial Aura got beaten his bumper um, first time out. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, not, they're all they're horses that I want to see around all being well for a few years to come. <laughs> Certainly. Finally, Shane O'Hanlon, who's a, a, a listener of the show, and I know, I know Shane um, loves. Does he know? So I'm going to have to ask you about that horse. Finally, Kim, how is he? Well, he, he's a he's a he's a he's a complete oddball, um, and um, <laughs> uh, you know he's he's been a, he's been a star for us. You know, I bought him off Jacqueline Coward after he won a point a point in Yorkshire, um, and. Uh, uh, we ran him. We ran him a couple of times his first season, and the second run, I said to these owners, "I said this horse won't see a race course again until next season because he he ran a very encouraging race, and you know he came out last season and, and, and really ran well. I mean, he's uh, he won his novice, won two novice hurdles at uh, Cheltenham. Uh, it all went rather weirdly wrong at Newbury, but he is, as I say, an oddball. We have to we have to be very careful how we take him out. The he hates going in the paddock. Um, he hates noise." Um, and uh, you know, at Cheltenham the other day, we 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 rode him around the pre parade ring and straight onto the course, um, and didn't parade him at all. Um, and that seemed to work whether it'll work twice, I don't know. He nearly killed me at Newbury, he got on his hind legs and punched like fury. Um, but a horse with great talent, um, great he's had, go ahead. You know, he's had he's won his two races, he ran well enough. Uh, he 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 got beaten by about a horse at Cheltenham last time, and he. He could go back to Cheltenham or Doncaster next weekend. So, um, um, as I say, he's an oddball with a very talented horse. He seems to be a horse that kind of gives it all on the track, Kim. He seems a hardy so-and-so. He is, a, he is, you know, he, he's a willing horse. He wants to do his best for you. He's actually a very kind individual. He never shows anything, um, uh, any waywardness or any description at home. But he's just, when he gets, he just gets a bit excited on the big day. Um, the big day is the day, day's racing as far as he's concerned. And he really doesn't like the paddock. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kim, we did promise you a short interview. I know you're uh, away meeting owners this afternoon. Finally, I suppose, uh, for the champ that are listeners this weekend, what's, in your view, what's your best chance of a winner all weekend? 
Well, I, I you know, I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to plumb away and say that um, Imperial Aura is going to be favourite when he runs on Saturday. Um, it would be wonderful. I've never, I don't think I've ever had a runner in the many clouds, um, and uh, it would be lovely to, if we can come away with a win like that. But uh, you know, at the end of it, all, <coughs> as long as they all come, <coughs> excuse me, as long as they all come back in one piece and live for another day, that's, all, that's the important thing. We've seen, unfortunately, one or two rather unfortunate um, accidents um, recently, and. Uh, now, these horses are treasured by all of us and loved by all of us, and we want to see them home. So let's have a good weekend. That's all that matters. Absolutely. Kim Bailey, top man. Great to speak with you, and very best of luck for this weekend and the rest of the season. You're yeah, very kind. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so lads, that was Kim Bailey. Um, just very quickly, anything else um, before we cross uh, back home to Irish soil? Anything else to, to mention? Um, in the UK this weekend? None for me. No, not for me. More more happening over this side of the water, I think. Yeah, there is one actually at entry that I do want to mention. Um, yeah, um, Ollie Murphy's horse in the 11.15. It's a novice hurdle. Um, he, he impressed me last time at Sandown. Um, did an awful lot wrong. Um Came second in a bumper, by the way, at, at Southwell. So not your traditional, but this, this horse actually is a, a relation of Ribble Valley. And it was a good, a good novice hurdler for uh, Nicky Richards. He's owned by the Magners, um, and and ran. Look, he was he was impressive. I felt at Sandown, considering how green he was early, and um, travelled into the race beautifully. This lad is pacey, and when we spoke to Ollie, he liked them. Um, so bombs away. Um, might this I, I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't favoured for this race. Richmond Lake is in there for the McCain's. Um, but not priced up at the moment. But the eleven fifteen of entry um would be one of my stronger uh, fancies of the weekend. That's bombs away. Um lads, next race we are gonna come to or we're gonna come back across this this side of the Irish Sea. Um lads, anything at Navin uh, on Saturday, Ronald Groom. Um we'll come to you. Anything at Navin? That tickles your fancy. Yeah, yeah, it's a good card. Uh, it's a good card, Barry. It's uh, a couple of interesting runners. Uh, not to mention Jinto, who goes in the nav and novice hurdle. A lot of eyes be on him. Uh, I like one in the big handicap hurdle, the Bechtel Stud handicap hurdle. If, if people remember, this is where Flooring Porter absolutely smashed up a field and begun his kind of trajectory upwards, then up to the stairs hurdle. I think there could be another stairs hurdle horse here, uh, and Willie Mullins trains it. The, the mayor there burning victory uh i'm really interested there i had a i had a i must confess i had a little nibble on her for the stairs hurdle and and back there for the mayor's hurdle as well today she's off one four three here uh and just could be very nicely handicapped um people are talking about buzz for the for the stairs hurdle and uh he's he is the buzz horse i suppose won really nicely the ascot but she only finished a length and a half away from in the cesar which conceding them two pounds the two of them finished miles clear i think she could be a real improver coming up to this three mile trip uh she only had four starts over hurdles she ran a perfectly respectable race in the in the galway hurdle she was seventh and if she does improve for this step up the trip she's rated 106 on the flat um you know, it's a fair hefty rate so very interested in her in the back in the back of stud handicap hurdle she'll um she'll handle the quick ground as well and uh, they haven't priced that up yet and um, they have priced up the uh, two and a half mile handicap chase later on the card i think tom likes this horse as well i think he tipped it up the last time wow wow for dermot mclaughlin i didn't think this uh, fox rock handicap chase the 253 was much of a race um and and this this horse is really progressive he's won both the starts for dermot uh, and he won really nicely at Nace the last day. Uh, recorded a very good time in the process. Uh, conflated his top weight there. I'm not sure. I think that run behind the Catarera might be a bit overrated. It was on very soft ground. I think it's going to be decent enough ground in Navin. It might get a bit good to soft maybe by the time we get around to Saturday. Uh, but we'll see what happens. And then uh, the uh, Riviera Tell, obviously, in the Claren Davis there. I think you know, Gordon's making hay with her at the moment. She's, she'd be odds on, I'd say, but I think she'll win again. So yeah, good card in Avon. Uh, looking forward to looking forward to seeing that on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thomas Kyle, the Willie Mullins juggernaut is out. Um, some nice nice entries uh, across the card, I suppose, on uh, Saturday. What do you want? Um, 
burning victory, as Roland said, Blue Siri. But the one that I want to mention, actually, just before we kind of move on from, from now, I'm conscious of time, uh, Keskan Risk, interesting, um, was a horse I, I, I liked, I suppose, going novice hard. And last year, won a bumper for the Hides at Fairy House, was snapped up by Gretsch and sent to Joseph. Um, ran in the Ballymore last year, ran, ran a couple of decent races in good, good, um, good novice races last year, but... Uh, I think he'll make a better chase. He's racing in, in the beginner's chase over two and a half. Uh, just interested in him to see how he runs. Uh, Thomas, anything for you at, at Navin? You're on mute. Hold on, I've mute yeah. ejection. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. On the background. yeah, just back to that um, novice chase that um, Brona was talking about. Um, I see the real deal is out. He also had him in the beginner's chase as well. Um, we know the rise that that horse had last year. Um, there's still he's a big scopey horse. There could be a lot to like about him over fences. I know he's had a school around Navin. Um, social media is great. You can see what lads are at. I seen <laughs> Ronan McNally had him had him around Navin a couple of weeks ago. Um, so he's one to look forward to go and chase and have a look at him. Um, in that big handicap hurdle, um, I like one down the bottom. No needs again. Barbary Castle. Um uh, was he's been beaten in maiden hurdles. It's his first handicap run. Um nice weight in his back. Connor Orr rides him. Um he was a good third to a horse called Chinks of Light, who's a horse I think you should keep an eye on. Um he was trained by a small trainer and he won well in Galway, a maiden hurdle. And he's changed hands now to John McConnell. Um I seen him entered somewhere over the weekend. It might be Punchestown. But um, he's a nice grey horse, and uh, he done it from the front that day under Brian Hayes, and he's probably a horse to look forward to for the year. He was third behind him. He comes in off bottom weight, as I say in this, so he could be worth a bit of value. Connor's good on them light weights, as he doesn't have to waste, so he's good and strong on them ones. Mm. And just back to the the Fox Rock handicap, yeah, Wawa. Um, he should take a bit of beating. Um, one that we're we're always talking about in this. Um, I do think. Uh, Golden Jewel will, will give him a race. Um, I know he was second last. The time, standard ground was. Ground was How many times has Thomas Kyle? The standard Golden Jewel, Jewel mentioned. I know, but he, he, he boys, he deserves a big handicap. Like, and he's so, he, he is, he's so he's so well handicapped over fences. Like, he I know he's running two pound out of the handicap, but he's so well handy. Like, he's he's a stone less than his hurdle mark. Um, like he's a good 130, solid 130 hurdler. But this this is the time he's getting. I've been screaming at Eddie that he wants two and a half mile. He wants two and a half mile on good ground. Now, the last time was two mile on soft ground, and the horse of Henry's beaten in, down in Cork, who's entered in the Hilly Way, um, Hubs and Doe or something like that. Hubs and Doe. Yeah, that's the one. Um, so look, it's good enough form. Um, but this, I think, two and a half mile good ground, this is more of his. Is more up his street. Even Philip Henry gets back on him. Um, he he he'll be there thereabouts. Look, he'll always be there thereabouts. But I think he he definitely deserves one good big handicap like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's my few for now. That's your tuppence halfpenny worth. Um, if that's even a a thing anymore. Uh, two o'clock at Punchestown on Sunday. Come on, lads, let's get to it. Let's go go down the John Durkin. Um, the big race this side of the Irish Sea. And by Alan, even money. Backer Duderie, 7-2. Ala Ho is a 5-1 to one chance. Album photos in there. It'd be interesting to see. Does he run 10-1? Uh, to one. Asterian for lunch. And Ro uh, Ronan might be able to update us because I think he was on the call with Willie today. Uh, Janadil, 10-1. to one. Kemboy, 14-1. to one. Um, There's probably not much point in going any further. Willie Mullins, how many has he in here, lads? Uh, Ronan Groom. For all the Mullins horses, Envoy Allen has even money. Does he deserve to be that? I don't. I uh, don't think so, Barry. Uh, this is this could be a good race now. Obviously, we're we're, we're not dealing with declarations at the moment. Um, but, geez, if half of them showed up, I could get Envoy Allen to even money. Look, he's a he's. We know how good he is, or how good he could be. Uh, and it's more of a case of the latter, actually, how good he could be, because I don't think he's beaten that much over fences, to be honest, yet. He's beaten about 14 runners in, in four or five races, you know, and it's not that many. His form last season, we talked about it going into Cheltenham, uh, it wasn't great, you know. He has, he's yet to beat a grade, grade one or even a grade two winner over, over fences, I believe. So he's, he's, he's the, against the, 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 the time on Twitter when um, 
the time on Twitter when Ronan O'Goon got absolutely assaulted for, for saying anything by Alan is going to get beaten in the marsh. Now, look, it's horse racing. Uh, I didn't and the say horse that. we put up. What's that? I didn't say that. What did you say? I didn't say anything. I said Envoy Allen were, were taken on. You you were the one who crabbed on Envoy Allen the whole time. Yeah, correct. Okay, right. Uh, right, go ahead. Go on. I interrupted. <laughs> yeah, look, I, as you know, I'm a big Aloho fan. Look, he's first time out here. I think uh, he can run very well. Um, he should be five to one shot. I think that's because there's half, they're half thinking he might run, but I, I think Woody is going to run him. Uh, by the sounds of him today, he was. I wasn't on that call, but my colleague was, and he was telling me about it. I believe Albion Photo goes to Tremor now, uh, and then maybe runs again before Cheltenham, but I think they're going to go back to Tremor with him. Um, Fakir Duderiz, give him a big shout as well. He looked really good um, on his comeback run, beating Royal Rendezvous 15 lengths, a race fit Royal Rendezvous. 15 lengths. I think that was a fair effort. And a couple of other with these other horses. I think he's going to run a lot here. He could run a steering for Lange, uh, talented horse on his day. Kenboy even coming back to this trip would give a chance to. There's plenty there if you want to take on him by Ireland. I can't see him being an even money or even an odds on shot on as some bookies have him now when the declarations come in. So we'll uh, we'll see how see how the market kind of develops then. But for, at the moment, I'd be wanting to take him by Ireland on. Mm. Yeah, me, me, me too, Roman. Um, the one in here that I'm interested in for the rest of the season this was long term. I spoke about him on this show, Janadil. Um, interested to see how he goes here, um, and more so when he steps up to to three miles. Um, Janadil just as a horse that interests me. Um, in in here, Thomas Coyle, anything to sort of add? Yeah, look. It, it... It's kind of hard when we don't have decks, as we've said. Um, but I think Fakir Duderi, uh, he looked good in Clamel on his reappearance. Um, that under his belt, um, he probably he's probably a better bet at five to one than M. Boy Allen at even money. As Ronan says, he hasn't beaten much. I think the horse that finished second in the race up the north was she rated ninety five. The horse of Hearty, some bit of place to get a two hundred to one. Oh, some bit of place and get a horse rate at 95 to finish second and then fair play to them um i actually see she's is she in the hilly way or something i've seen her in one of the great ones did somewhere. she go up she go up a crazy amount for it as well that she went up like 20 pounds <laughs> to the handicap market did she? i i thought i seen today that she was still rated 95 i don't know oh, oh she showed up yeah. but um yeah maybe i got that but right. uh yeah look it's it's a it's a watching brief for me um Look, hopefully Envoy Allen can set the world alight again and, and get himself back going. But uh, look, this will be a good test for him, so it'll be a good race and uh, look forward to it. Through him we hit him in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the hilly way. It's an urge mean. <laughs> 220 at Cork. Yielding ground at the moment. Um, one on yielding at... Expecting a bit of rain tonight, though. And from what, I um, what do you think, Ronan? How far? What What do you think of uh, out of Willie's three two mile chasers? You're on the the B team here. You've been sent down all the way to Cork <laughs> for the hilly way. What do you think of that? Third choice. <laughs> Yeah, probably the the rain is a, a a huge factor, isn't it? Yeah, Before well, like you get getting the soft ground. That that sorry, Tom, you're right. That horse that we were talking about, Open Down Royal, did only go five pounds. That's that's kind of I just checked it there. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Is it uh, Echoes and Light? Was that name? How Echoes could that be more yeah, important than running in the anyway? Of course. Yeah, look, he he this will this will break up. I think. Um, this could be five or six runners, actually. I think. Uh, well, no, actually, a few of them could come down because of the strength Sam of John Durkin. So Sam Crow likely to ride to run, maybe. Poss possibly, yeah. They, uh, Eddie's keeping him to two miles. I think he's looking at the two mile race for Christmas, so he possibly could come down here. Uh, you nope, know, maybe nope, Daily nope, Tiger. Sure run, really. Yeah, I think they were talking about stepping him up and trip. Uh, Henry right. said after the last race, so. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. That Epson to who, as you said, uh, might run. I say if you don't win this, Barry, you you can you can rip up a ticket. Your captain, your captain's pick for the for the road to Cheltenham mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he should he should be getting this done. Really, shouldn't he mm -hmm. on the soft ground? Yeah, well, my eyes is going to be on Cork this weekend because 
Um, and in the 145, um, I love this Magic Days. Uh, I think this is the target. There's some nice uh, flashy entries in here um, with the likes of, obviously, Riviera de Tell. I don't think she's going to go here. Is she rolling? Uh, but there's some flashy entries in here where Concertista has entered for Willie Mullins. Um, you know, Jeremy's Flame is a decent mayor. Stacey Gold is in here again. But uh, I just love this Magic Days. Um, Thomas Kyle, what's your thoughts on her? Yeah, she should be hard to be beating this. You'd imagine this is going to break up as well. Um, look, she looks, and what she's done so far, she looks decent. Um, yeah, look, it, it's very hard to know without declarations. We'll know more tomorrow. But I'd say, as you said, it's going to break up. She's going to take all the beating. Um, just you, you'd be wondering, will Stacey Golds meet the heights that she kind of was showing last year? Um, she could be the one maybe to chase her home. Um for Mick Winter. She could be well she could be well handicapped, Stacey Gold, uh, especially over hurdles. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just yeah. think she's probably finding her feet again. She she will go in somewhere again for Mick Winter. She's a good she's a mark of hundred and yeah, she's a mark of 133 uh, over hurdles. She, she's won that off that sort of a mark in, in, in a handicap uh, on softer ground um over the minimum um not necessarily over the minute. I mean, I think she's versatile in, 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 ter in terms of trip. Uh, so we'll just see does she run here or does he spare her and maybe revert back over hurdles. But um, she's she's on a nice mark of 133, I think. Um, finally, I suppose, look, lads, we've, we, we've done a lot of talking. Um, it's a very exciting weekend, the racing. Um, it's time for, it's that time of the week. Naps and MB will go around the grounds. Rona Groom? The Golden uh, Nap. Nap, uh, going both mine to Navin. Uh, I'm not hugely strong on anything in Britain, so I go Nap in the 108 burning victory, and NB I'll go uh, wow wow in the 253 handicap chase there. Thomas Kyle, uh, yeah, me, um, I think I'll back will, to I think I will nap wow wow. Um, his last two races, I seen him that day, the first day in Killarney, and he was very good. And he was probably even better in a in a better race in Nace the last time. Jumps well, looks uncomplicated. Um, nice weight off ten seven. Darrow Keith on board. Um, look, he'd probably take the beating again. I'd say he's still well handicapped. I'd say he could reach a little bit higher than what he is. And um, next best, I'm going to go two A per me in the for each way value in the in entry. Yeah, I'm actually going to keep it to Sandown for the nap, and I'm going to put in Grenatine. I never thought I'd be taking on Shaq and Persuade with my nap, uh, but I just think uh, there's more to come from this horse. It has been the target. Uh, Shaq on vulnerable, in my view, on, on good ground first time up, and uh, um, I'm very interested in Grenatine this weekend. I, I think there's a lot more to come from him, and I think 5-1 to one is uh, a disrespect to the horse. Um, Edward Stone, uh, I'll put him in as a an ex best. So you're going nine to two, five to one. If one of those don't click, um, then I'm not doing my job right. And I will mention bombs away as well. And on this side, I see in terms of the betting, uh, so many horses to be interested in, but in terms of races that are priced up at, at, at the moment, I don't have anything concrete. Uh, but really looking forward to seeing magic days and the team captain and Ergemine. Um, an urge mean, as I call him. Talk to I'll, me, Thomas. I'll get you a picture of him down there on Sunday. I'm going down. I have a runner in the handicap, so I'll get a picture for you, Barry. Keep you happy. Absolutely. Well, look, listen, lads. Um, I want to thank everyone as well just for getting involved. Just a plug again. Um, we have been doing it on the the road to Cheltenham Challenge myself and Ronan Groom putting in the template. But for this for this ep or for this uh, series on Thursday nights, the podcast. Um, we are going to put in the, uh, you'll see it was in the description last week, um, the uh, NAP and MB challenge. Uh, so keep uh, an updated uh, profit and loss, the, the trackers there, update your selections for this weekend, put in the date uh, and update your score below. And let's uh, let's all try to come out in profit um, on this uh, show uh, between now and the end of the season. So lads, that concludes episode number six. Thanks to Kim Bailey. Thanks to the lads, Ronan and Thomas. And uh, looking forward to next week already.